This episode is brought to you by America's Rehab Campus. Get on the road to recovery with the best rehab in beautiful Arizona. Dial 1-833-272-7342. That's 1-833-ARC-REHAB. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to The 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 Archer Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, and welcome back to another episode of the Arcast. It's your man Buddha right here. Arc Ambassador Vance Johnson. Absolutely. Michaela. Michaela. We are all here right now, and we will, first of all just want to thank you guys for listening, for everyone who's been sharing it, and just wanted to give you guys a heads up that we are going to be on a different platform now. So we'll be on Apple, we'll be on Google. Nice. We're going to be everywhere. So that's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So today I wanted to introduce to you guys somebody who is very special to me. My homeboy, he's been here for a while, man. I've seen tremendous growth in this dude. His story is amazing. He's an amazing person. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our homeboy, Marcus. What's up, Marcus? Yeah, what up, dog? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. What up, Buddha? Good. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you, yeah. man. I appreciate you coming yeah. through. And so I'm wanted, excited to see you, young man. Yeah, you t- you guys too. And I wanted to say, Buddha, you're a big part of my story too. Dude. Wow. Yeah, thank big you, brother. Part. Yeah. Praise God. Hey, man, God is good. That's, yeah, that's such blessed. a blessing. It's a... It's really crazy, dude, coming through this whole process with Michaela and Vance and the people that we've had in here. Mm-hmm. I've never felt so much in my life like God has been working. Mm-hmm. Like he's been Every working, you know. Every day. I'd been praying for a while about trying to be into a sense of community, you know, being around uh, other Christians, other people that are faithful. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's, I'm just very grateful that God has allowed. And what's know, awesome, this is the way he's using you. Yeah, all of us. It. All of us. Oh, yeah, all of definitely. us. But this right here is your gift, and that's the reason why we're on this podcast, because Heck you're yeah, the one man. to put it together. Hey, praise mm-hmm. God. Praise Alex. God. So thank you very much, man. So we were talking a little bit earlier before the episode started. Vance, you just got back from a spot. Where were you at right now? You know, uh, ARC has some uh, different places that we're able to go and partner with here in the community of Tucson, Arizona. Okay. And I was down where they had some homeless kids that are able to go get some counseling, and it's called Goodwill. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they asked me to go share my testimony with these kids that were 18 to 24 years old. And I was able to just really share the hope with them because I said, just because I was that famous guy doesn't make me better than you. And all of a sudden, after I shared my testimony, a young man got up and walked up to me and said, sir, I moved out from Africa about 15 years ago. And I just want to thank you so much to show how you even had to go through the things, even though you were famous, that I went through as, even as a child. That's cool. Even struggling here in Tucson, Arizona, since I've been here the last 15 years. But I'm able to know that we all go through it. Mm-hmm. And so thank you so much for that. And then eventually they came up to us and talked to uh, Patricio and said, is there any way we can maybe refer a couple of people that really need to get into the ark to get treatment? All right. And that's what he said, yes. And so that's the very reason why and things that we do here in Arizona. And that's why the people that are listening right now, if you have loved ones that are dealing and struggling, please reach out to us. That's and amazing. So that's why we have the ark cast. Hey, man, and that's why God is using you to be able to speak to all of these amazing kids. That's, Amen. That's, that's great. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, you know, I forgot to tell you this. Guess who else reached out to me? Who's that? The University of Arizona did. Oh, yeah? Yes, the heads of the University of Arizona asked me, Vance, will you show up coming up on this Friday to come talk to all the athletes because we want them to know that just because that you were famous didn't mean that they weren't struggling like you were struggling when you were in college doing the wrong thing when you were off the field. Whether it was the gambling, having sex with women that you weren't married to, and the addictions that you struggle with. And we want that superstar to come tell these kids, you need to run the right play on the field and off the field. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Friday's going to be a busy day. You yes, better drink some is. lemon tea, get your throat <laughs> ready, bud. All right. <laughs> That's really cool. Michaela, how are you doing today? Doing wonderful. Doing good? Mm-hmm. Man, uh, prayers. I know you said that you saw an accident on the way up here. Yeah, prayers to whoever that was. It's, it's mm-hmm. a horrible thing. Yes. But, man, I'm, I'm grateful we're here again. We have another episode. Marcus, brother, you have been a blessing to this facility, man. Thank you. Thank for you. sure, for sure. How long have you been with ARC now? So... Two years, two years. I think of a week ago it two was. Years. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations, man! Yes, dude, wow. yeah. Just the feeling that I have being able to work here. This is. I have a special place in my heart for the art. Cause wow. Uh, yeah. So uh, my three years sober is coming up on um, October twenty eighth. Nice. Yeah, and that's, uh, yes. Yeah. Nice. Another applause for you, brother. Yes. You. And that's the day I stepped into detox and. Uh, you know, I just, I, I was at that time and I wanted to put it all in. I was ready to put it all in. You wow. know what I mean? So, and yeah, family here. I get to work with family every day. That's, That's great. awesome. I mean, yeah. And I can't wait to get into a story because the very thing that he had to endure through life, look where he is today. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. absolutely. And you've, you've worn a lot of different hats here yes, too, sir. man. So we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. But first things first, um, I just want to know a little bit about your story, man. Well, yeah. Where are you from? So um, I was born in Fort Carson, Colorado. My mom was in the military. 
she always tells me to like she just, she's from a, a small town in Michigan, uh-huh. so she's like whatever I need to do to get out of there. So yeah, so we've lived Texas, New Mexico, Alaska, wow. Colorado, all over the world. Yeah, so yeah, I've moved around a little bit, but I, I loved it. And how'd you end up in Colorado? Um, so she is uh, at Fort Carson, the base out there. She was stationed out there, so that's where I was born. I know right where that is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. I love Colorado. That's but, awesome. Yeah. Are you a Bronco fan? No, sir. <laughs> that's okay. Cowboys. <laughs> and that's okay. Cowboys away. Okay. Cowboy fan. Yes, sir. Guess where the Denver Broncos were born at? Where, uh, were they in, da- in uh, Dallas? Yeah, Dallas. Because yeah. all the ball players that played with the Dallas Cowboys were yeah. sent to Colorado to become coaches. Yeah, I didn't know that. So I always guess who my favorite team is? The Denver Cowboys. Yeah. Denver Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. All right. So take us into your childhood a little bit. How was your childhood? Um, you know what? I had a, a stable household. Like when I think of my mom, I think of a strong woman. You know what I mean? She's uh, taking us to all our appointments. I never had to worry. Um, I saw her strength um, when I was growing up, and I uh, I fed off that. I was the, the eldest, so I have a brother and a sister, so I felt like I needed to be there for support for her, help what oh, yeah. she needed. Yeah, so I was the big brother. Yeah. Pretty much. So um, I was raising my mom, my dad, my brother and sister. And when I refer to my dad, he's not my biological dad. He was in the military, too. But by all means, he's my dad. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's, Love that. He, yeah, I have his last name, Dr. Me, and I think uh, I was two. So, yeah, he's an awesome, awesome guy. And I still look up to him. So That's yeah, he's a, a big part in my story, too. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's great. Okay. So you grew up with your, you know, with your parents were taking care of you and stuff. Mm-hmm. So. How did you hit rock bottom? Well, you know, you know, it's crazy. Um, in high school, I, I kept myself busy. I think sports kept me out of it. When I'm a, uh, when I'm busy, I'm doing best. <laughs> yeah, and I, for the most part, the normal thing, you know, smoke some bud here, drink. But I managed to stay busy. And my, my, uh, I think I got my work ethic from my dad. Yeah. Too. So he is on me about that. You know, I hated it at the time, but today I appreciate everything he's taught me. So who yeah. introduced you to drinking and smoking back in so, the day? So just the the type of the people I was hanging around with, but um, I really could drink like a weekend thing, smoke a weekend thing. But I identified too that I did have an addictive personality. Oh yeah. So so when we started doing some, when we were drinking, I'm going all out. Mm. I, you know what I mean? I'm 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 doing something. You know what I mean? And I started recognizing that in my family. Um, no one, I'm, I'm guess you'd call it the black sheep. Mm-hmm. No one so, no one was like that. My mom didn't drink. My dad could drink, and I wouldn't see him drink again for weeks. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. my next question. Yeah. yeah okay. So it I, wasn't in the house that you learned it. It was outside the house. Exactly. And you know what I wanted to get into about that is I think I didn't really understand. I didn't understand what addiction was. I didn't understand mm-hmm. what um, withdrawal was. You know what I mean? When I thought of drugs, I thought of criminals, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So it's a little confusing to me. But I think the day I realized it, too. So I was, a, like I said, I was in sports. Yeah. Broken so many bones. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a kid that wanted to do the, you know, right on my bike, wanted to do the jump first, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so I, I think the first time I, um, I was prescribed some pain meds like usual. And, um, I think, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to be the tough guy. I didn't want to take that. So, and, and the one time I took it, there was just, I, it felt like something inside of me just was like, yep. Like, this is it. You know what I mean? Wow. You sharing my testimony, yeah, man. Yeah. It's just like, I was, it just numbed me, you yep. know, these things that I didn't know how to to handle that no, I didn't, my family didn't understand. For example, uh, like I would act out, and when I act out, I was aggressive, start punching things, and it, it's it's like when I used that pill for the first time, it just kind of numbed me, like everything was good. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And how how was like, because I, I think about that, man, with my son, my baby boy, he's got some issues, like mm-hmm. anger issues yeah. too, and he'll get mad and things like that. Mm-hmm. Did, was that like a constant thing, your mom and dad getting on you about your anger and stuff? Yeah, so like I said, my my mom and dad, they're firm firm like that, but I just don't think I, I was acting out in a way that I could not explain, uh-huh. and that frustrated me. And uh-huh. um, yeah, so I'd get into it a couple times, and yes, my mom, I think, my, has a little temper too with her, and I respect my mom, you know what I mean? Yeah. So when she says um, it's it's done, but me and my... My dad, we'd get into it sometimes, and it's just certain emotions I didn't know how to, to process, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he's military, yeah. so oh, yeah, he's just yeah, like, yeah. you know, cut and dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, and I, like I said, I've always looked up to him, so I've, I feel like sometimes um, felt like I was, I, I guess I was like letting him down with the certain behaviors that yeah. I would show, um, certain things that I didn't know how to explain to him about. Like, uh, you know, a lot of us look up to our dads. He's my idol, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to make him make him proud of me, make him happy. But uh, yeah, so I had 
issues with a lot of that. Wow. Okay. So you were prescribed medications from broken bones. Mm -hmm. Just started getting into it, right? Yeah. So it started for um, like medical issues like that. And I think I still, I still was working, still was doing sports. It didn't come time, you know? um, So I moved out my senior year to my best friends. And I think, so one of my roommates, we, we, had some perk set the oxy 30s so he had one of those and we all took one and like i said that feeling i just liked and i'm at this time i'm it's my senior year working at costco got a car all that doing yeah. great and i think so the next day i go to work i'm like yeah, i want to feel that way again you know what i mean yeah. and um i use it i start using it at work and it's just at this point it's it's unmanageable i don't i'm starting to get sick and i don't understand why you know yeah and i asked my roommate my roommate's probably like he said you're probably withdrawn I was like, what is withdrawing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, at that time, it got to a point where I did not want to feel like that. It was either get get some more um, Oxy-30s or don't go to work. And at that point, they're 20 a piece. That's a $100 habit a day. Wow. Um, So, yeah, so I just couldn't do that for too long. Normal story, just once it gets to a fact where my bosses are seeing, um, it's affecting my being on time. Uh So I get get let go. I think uh, probably I managed... Maybe about six months working while using the pills. How old were you at this time? um, I was I was eighteen. Eighteen years old. Yeah, because I want people to be able to hear that might be able to really relate with what what you're talking about at their age. Yeah. So when I was using every day, it was eighteen. So yeah. Yeah, you were experiencing all of these things that you didn't understand. Yeah. In your teenage years. Yes. Did Did you have anyone in your life that had experienced addiction before? No. So um, on my mom's side of the family, I knew of it. But like I said, I just thought that's due to them. I didn't understand, like, you know what I mean? Like how I felt at the time when I finally realized what withdrawals were. It's like I couldn't breathe unless I used it again. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like I couldn't get up. I couldn't function. And I didn't know how to... To handle that, I didn't know who to talk to. I wasn't good at expressing my emotions. Yeah. Wasn't at this point. Obviously, I wasn't trying to tell my parents. I knew I'd let them down. Yeah. You know, they gave me every mm-hmm. option to to succeed in life. You know, they raised me very independent. So was all, I've always been independent, working every day. Like I had a car in high school. That's because I was working weekends, providing gas, paying for insurance. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So long story short, the habit gets the pills get too expensive. Uh-huh. We lose the apartment. I move out of the apartment. This time I have nowhere to go. I'm going to house to house. I see other people that I surround myself with using uh, heroin. And so I start, obviously, I, you never think one day you're just going to start doing heroin. Yeah. But um, I start doing that, a uh, way cheaper habit. I'm able to function during the day. And by this time, I'm, I'm just lost. I don't know what to do. You know, I have nowhere to go. During that time, real quick, did you ever reach out to your mom and dad to ask them yep. for help? I hid, I hid this for as long as I could. Yeah. I didn't want no wow. one to know. I didn't know how to tell them. I was that guy. Yeah. Wow. So, yep. Crazy. Well, and it's, it's hard, too, because I feel like when you do look up to your parents as much mm-hmm. as you do, it almost puts, we put this pressure on ourselves we don't even mean to put on us. And yes. then that, like, just makes any decision we yeah. make so much harder to approach them because you don't want to disappoint them. But yeah. then at the same time, you're like, those are the two people. Like, at least in my, I was never, you know, didn't struggle with addiction, but with things in college, like I would mess up or I would, you know, lose my phone. And I'm like, I don't want to tell them because I don't want to get mad at me. But yeah. those are the only two people I know to help yeah. me. <laughs> it's true. And it's weird too when you really think about it as a parent looking at my son, you know, I'm far from a saint. I've made mm. so many mistakes in my life and I know mm. he's going to make plenty of them. But it's weird when you're a kid, you don't think that. No. You just think adults have all their stuff together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if I say something, like, I'm, I'm just afraid of the repercussions, when in reality, it's like, yeah. it's it's just that fine line. Like, it's, it's so hard for... Well, for and now I'm a full-blown adult, and I'm still stumbling through. <laughs> <laughs> and you must live in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Life just smacks you in the face. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. man. Yes, it does. That's biblical. Take us to that part of your life. When did your addiction... And the hiding and everything start to collide where you weren't able to hide that anymore. Um, I think so, but I'm, I'm like I said, I'm homeless at this time. My kid's mom, she's a doesn't do drugs, not an addict. Tried to stay over there as much as I could, but um, I'm running around. Fast forward a little bit, a couple of years, I find out my um, she's pregnant with my son, and wow. um, I think just all these things at once, you know, was overwhelming me. I didn't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. And obviously the first thought in my head was, you know, I need to get, I need to figure this out before my son's born. Yeah, I know that feeling um, when, you know, you don't have a parent in your life. And I was like, I'm not, that's not going to be me. I'm going to be there for my son, you know? And uh, yeah, but in a way, 
like I wasn't handling it the right way. Right. I was just, yeah, I was just kind of shut down. And I, I'm, I'm a like procrastinator to the fullest. I'm like, I'll, okay, tomorrow for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. And before I know it, I'm years, like months pass. I just, I'm just numbing myself. That's all I knew how to do. Just numbing. Um, yep. Yep. And you dads out there listening to him have this conversation and be transparent need to hear what he's saying at that young age, being that father, yes. so that you guys can see that you need to change. Mm -hmm. so that you can be in your kids' lives like this young man is sharing with his testimony and starting off before we get into him getting into the treatment. But this is really important, what he's sharing right now. Yeah. A lot of fathers need to hear what he's saying. For sure. And like you said, the numbing thing. I mean, the way that I see it, it's like sweeping dirt under the rug. You can only sweep it under the rug for so Mm -hmm. much before that rug starts piling up, you know? I was the king of that, just piling stuff up to the side, not not, um, dealing with it running from all my issues and and it's not that you don't have inside of you what it takes to handle it it's just mm-hmm. when you're so exhausted from all of the stress and all yeah. of the pain that you're going through just can't process it. yes and what i realized today is the shame and guilt i had i was just so mad at myself i was looking for whatever i could to blame mm-hmm. blame something else mm-hmm. um it was really tough for me i didn't you know like i said i didn't know how to handle that didn't know how to move forward so I just kept going deeper, started um, IV use heroin. Mm-hmm. Meth came into the picture. Wow. Um, yeah, and like I said, so I'm one of the people that I push my family, people who care about me away. So I'm getting, by this time, I'm around people who I'm looking at. I remember just sitting there one day and just being like, what, like, what am I doing? Like, who am I? Who am I surrounding myself with? Yeah. You know Guys, I mean? and look, I want you to hear how the devil works. Yeah. He literally was pushing you away from your own family. Definitely, uh-huh. yeah. Yes. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. literally just push them away I don't talk to them um and I'm around these people too I'm not working right now so I'm doing whatever I need to do of steals selling drugs mm-hmm. and it's just it came down to the point where you know I'm breaking down I'm looking in the mirror I don't recognize you know who I see I just didn't know who I was I know I have a son coming soon baby boy coming soon and it's just I didn't know how to handle that doing whatever I needed to do so you fathers listening are you that dad that has a son that's going to be born or a daughter that's going to be born and you're struggling with your addictions, this young man actually is going to be the testimony you need to hear today. That's an incredible story, brother. Mm-hmm. Yes. So let's talk about when you first decided to get treatment. When, when mm-hmm. did that occur? Um, like I said, so I think the the first time I came, like I said, I didn't have nowhere to go. I don't think I was completely ready yet. Uh-huh. So I think it was a year after I had started the pills. I had people I was hanging around with, wrong place, wrong time. But I have a, a burglary charge. Okay. And... Um, yeah, so I'm put on probation at this point. I'm doing regular drops, and um, he violates me pretty quick. So I'm uh, I go to go obviously go to jail. Okay. Um, yeah, I I got a big wake up call in there, withdrawn in jail, and I'm I'm just like the it just finally the first time in a long time I was able to think clearly. I was able to think about my son. Able to think about yes, what I want to do with my life from here. While you were in jail. Yeah, while I was in jail. Yeah. And um, just, I kind of, kind of put in perspective what was important. And did so, they give you, real quick, did they give you an option when you were in jail to get treatment or that wasn't a part of it? No, it was not a part of it at the time. So I violated my probation. My probation officer didn't want to reinstate me. So I had um, did the rest of my time in jail. Um, when I got out, so I was sentenced to 90 days work furlough, uh, which I was able to get out and get a job. And this showed me that I, w- I could, you know, I could get a job. I could transition back into life because I think at this point I was, I've been beaten down so bad. And I just didn't think I'm just like I was feeling sorry for myself. It's like I got this felony. I can't get a job. And it's just like I had this talk with my dad and he's like he's kind of started like chuckling real quick. And he's just like, it's it's not that you can't get a job, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's it's you're gonna have to try a lot harder, but and it's kind of put. I, when he spoke, I listened. So yeah, yeah mm-hmm. so I I found a job, started started transitioning, living living normal. But I always had I had this on my back. I was returning to the jail every day, so I was, it was just in my head: Am I gonna use when I leave here? Yeah. And um, did you admit that you had a problem with addiction with your to your parents at that time? Yes. So when I when I was in jail, obviously I couldn't. You know what I mean? I came clean to it. And even when I came clean about it, I, I was still lying about so much stuff. Yeah, I get I just, it. I was that I was, guy. Yeah. <laughs> I just could not tell the truth. So it was just it was embarrassing. Like I said, that feeling of letting my dad down, letting my mom down, because they did give me the tools to succeed. I just didn't know how to do that. And when I was in jail, it broke me down. Mm. And um, I was just honest to them about everything. And it, it did help a lot. 
You know, I found out my uh, dad is someone who I could really talk to. That's great. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. And even though they didn't understand addiction, they did their best to understand what I was going through, which felt good, which at first wasn't always like I, fe- I, I felt like they were judging me, but he's one of the people that I would go to, one of the only people that I would go to when I, when I needed to talk, when I had issues about. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And you validate what I always tell people, transparency leads to transformation. So you being transparent about those things that you were struggling with mm-hmm. is going to be leading to where we are today. So I look forward to getting that part after we figure out yeah. how you ended up getting into treatment. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you said something that I want to touch base on because I, I truly believe this is a thing, you know. We're talking about the devil trying to pull you away from your family, your friends. Yep. And from what I understand as a man of faith, that that is how he works. Is yes. If he could take you away from your family, if he can take you away from people that love you, supporters, mm-hmm. people that can talk some sense into you, mm-hmm. yeah. then he can get you alone and he's free to say and do whatever he wants and throw whatever type of poison, you know? That's right. And it's weird how you said it wasn't until you were in that behind those bars mm-hmm. and you were kicking it. Finally, that veil is removed from your eyes. You don't have that or that the, the sheep's coat, whatever it is, the wool is removed from your eyes, right? Yeah. And you're finally able to feel those emotions and see clearly again mm-hmm. because he wasn't blocking it. He can wasn't I, can I prove that biblically? Yes, please. What scripture says is those demons that possess you and that are making you do all these bad things, they leave the house sometimes because they can't use you. And so when he was in jail, they couldn't do nothing with him anyway because he was already locked up. So they left for a little while. And that's when he started getting a clear mind. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. But they come back. Yeah, they, they want, do. They come back. They do. Tempt you some more. And that's the reason why sometimes we end up relapsing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, one issue I think I had though too when I was in jail, obviously I wanted to be clean. Yeah. Um, I knew I was better than that, but I don't think I was willing to do what it what it took. Yeah. I wasn't willing to drop the people I was hanging around with. I didn't understand which was a big deal to me. So I was surrounding myself with the wrong people. Um, I wasn't re- willing to forgive myself. Mm. That's uh, I when I look back, I'm just I was just so hard on myself, and I punished myself for it, and I didn't know. Yeah. So it was it was really tough for me to kind of. To point that out and just kind of, you know, look, just look at myself and say, what do you want to do? What do you, are you, you're better than this, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a part that isn't always touched on a lot in recovery mm-hmm. journeys is how hard it is to forgive yourself and how, I mean, we're our own worst critics. So then mm-hmm. you put your, yourself in that situation and you're trying to like get your life together, but then you're also trying to like accept mm-hmm. where you've been to be able to move forward. And it's, it's a hard thing that people yes. don't realize like yeah. that in itself is just a whole nother added layer to the challenge of recovery. But the fix on that layer is in God's word, he said, because when you become a new creation, the old you has passed. Behold, mm-hmm. all things are new. So wow. man, thanks for saying that because you just took me right to the scriptures. Where but you have to trust that and you have to, to be willing to let that go because Everything is new, but you have to believe that. Yeah. Well, I wish I was screaming hallelujah right now. Yeah, what you just now said. Go ahead. I'll lower your mic. You can scream as loud as you want. <laughs> yeah, let me take these off real quick, though. Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's awesome, man. So you decided, was it when you got out of jail that you wanted to get treatment? So yeah, when I got out of jail, for the first time I tried, and like I said, I struggled with this multiple times. I just wasn't, I guess I can say I'm hard-headed for yeah. sure. I got to learn it the hard way. Mm-hmm. So I definitely, like I said, my son's on the way. I, I'm doing whatever whatever I can. So I, I enter my first treatment center, and I kind of, you know what, I just, I told myself, I'm 30 days, that's going to fix it. The minimum I could do. Yeah. I wasn't willing to change certain things, and oh. I just thought by coming to rehab, It'll fix that, you know? Wow. And, um, yeah, so learned that the hard way, got out, would um, relapse. And I was, like I said, when I relapsed, I went on another, like, year run. It's just I didn't want to face what I'd done. I'm, I'm, I'm not going back because I'm embarrassed, Yeah, you know? And um, so, yeah, I think um, I had a wake-up call one day. Um, a, I would say a close call. You know, I got pulled over, and um, I had stuff in my car, and I'm just, like, kind of just – it just broke me down. It's like, just what am I doing? Like this, I've taken it as sign, a sign. How'd yeah. you get pulled over? So I don't know if it's my, um, I, I know I had no insurance at the time, so I got no insurance ticket. I don't know if they ran my tags or what, but I was so just paranoid that, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh. So are you speeding or how they how they pull you over? Um, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know if you ran my tags or what. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah. so yeah, I get pulled over, um, end up getting let go. I got like a, I don't know. I don't even remember how much it was, like a $900 ticket. Wow. But yeah, so um, so yeah, at this point, I have nowhere to go. I'm living out in my car. I'm going house to house, getting closer to my son being born, and I'm just, 
You know, I'm like, I this is the first time now. You know, I find the arc, and what's crazy about it is I've heard about it from some friends. Yeah. You know, so I come here, I come into the detox. You know, and um, I think still I was like looking for something to blame, some excuse to leave. I was just un- uncomfortable. And I remember I was I wanted to leave one day and a BHT had stopped me. And he's like, do this for me. He's wow. like, just he's like, eat, think about it. Let's watch the game. It's like I came in around is in football season, but he's uh-huh. like, just watch the game. He's like, and if you want to leave, you can leave. He's like, it's um, he's like, you know, what's waiting out there for you. He's like, um, why not yeah. see what see what's this way? You know what I mean, I like to think of it like a street sign, like. You can go this way, death, and that way, life. And it's, oh, yeah. it's easy mm-hmm. picture for me, and I'm just like, I want to live. You know what I mean? I wanna, I wanna fight. Wow. And uh, yeah, and, and it was just comfortable for me in, in detox. He's, you know, he it felt like to me like his understanding a little bit. And I had um, came to residential, like I said, that's where I met you, Buddha. Yes, sir. Your big part. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this. It's, a, it's so embarrassing. So this is something I do. I um, I remember a day too. We we were going on a trip to the zoo, right? Okay. And um, I was like, uh, a therapist told me, she's like, well, you can't go to the zoo because we have to finish some, I, it's something I had to do a one-on-one or uh-huh. something. And I got, I remember getting so mad. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to leave if I can't go to the zoo. And I came and talked to you about that. And I remember you just kind of talked to me and I, and I thought about it, cooled me down. And I thought about it after I was like, why am I worried about going to the zoo? Like I'm here <laughs> for my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, what am I doing? So yeah, just kind of. Kind of, and I talked to you, and you kind of put things in perspective. And I was like, I just had to, uh, just not prioritizing anything. Wow. Well, you see how God's that's using you, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, brother. Yeah. So yeah, it's embarrassing to think back to, you, but it's just certain certain little things like that that this place helped me out. That was comfortable. The staff, I felt like they truly cared. Yeah. Um, I met some some like minded people that I didn't really. Every other time I had gone to another rehab, I just kind of tried to skate under the radar. Uh huh. I was finding myself actually digging deep. Like I said, the therapist I had, and this was uh, where I made a lot of progress too. The therapist, I had a one-on-one with her and she uh, was asking me these random questions and I think she found something that she saw bugged me uh-huh. and she stuck on that. Mm. And it's and I just started, I just broke down because I don't, I don't express my emotions well at all. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I broke down, but after that, you know, I went in, Start went, running the right play. Yeah, and I went. I just went and I prayed, and I just something it was like a switch just went off in me. You prayed? And yes, I I got on my knees wow. and I prayed, and you know what? I didn't wow. ask for anything. I was just uh, thanking him that I'm still alive. You know what I mean? That I'm yeah. still here. And just something, something got me engaged, got me to want to fight. Yeah, so it's just different parts of this place. I have a big spot in my heart for it. That yeah. is, That's, yeah, and it just the being able to work here to give back. Like I said, I'm no no motivational speaker or anything, but I feel like my uh, passion has been just to communicate, like that BHT did with me that day. Just someone to know that they're they're here, they hear you. You know what I mean? Yes, I, I love doing that, and it's just you know I've been in the same position as some of the clients, and wow. I feel like I, awesome. I, I can really do some good in that way. Yes. You know, God, I, dude, your story is your story is really cool, dude. Thank you for coming in and sharing with us. Mm-hmm. I remember when when you first got hired on you started with Vic and yes. all of them you were and that's I wanted to give a shout out to Vic because he has a, a big spot in my heart too you know it's it's at the time he um I was uh when I graduated from here I went into sober living Oxford mm-hmm. Arc made sure I was all set up in there and that was I think the biggest change for me so every other time I had left rehab I didn't have no plan when I left here uh-huh. so what do you think is going to happen you know what I mean you don't have a foundation you don't have anything so when I left here it's all set up I had the Oxford house I had these guys around me that are keeping me accountable these people that were where I wanted to go are doing the same thing so we had each other's back wow it's a big deal for me so I had gotten a job at Ace Hardware right across the street yeah and uh, obviously Victor Moses they go in there get little parts keys and I he'd see me one day and he knows uh, knew my boss over there and he saw me you know work and recognize me and one day he's just we need some guys do you want to work for me and I just was like, like I couldn't believe it. I was like, really? You yeah. know what I mean? Like for, for at this point, I hadn't held a job down in years. I didn't. So you say I had no confidence ne- at all, no confidence. So him doing that really meant a lot for me. So when I came here, I did whatever I could, and I knew I was capable of it. A lot of these things, like like I told you, when I was raised, my dad taught me a lot of yeah. 
a lot of the traits I know today. So it helped me a lot. That's but cool. um, yeah, so mm-hmm. Vic has a special play in my, place in my heart for that. Gave me that chance. I feel like that's what I needed. I was able to build on that. And yeah, so like you said, just taking whatever steps I can. So started as maintenance, became a, you know, did my time. It, yeah. Moved up BHT, got certified as a RSS. So that's yeah, awesome. It's, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's awesome. Now being able to give back and to see, to see like when I, it's special to me. Like when I was in, in when I'm in detox, I really feel like I can do some good. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Just talking to the guys, like I just, I'm recognizing that's where I used to be. You know, I understand yeah. that feeling. That's awesome. I want to say something real quick because when you said you prayed, you took me to a scripture in 1 John five fourteen that says this, and this is this young man praying, and this is the confidence that we have towards him, God, that if we ask according to his will, he hears us. So he heard right. you. He heard your prayer. Amen. Prayer is a powerful thing. Yes. Yeah. Most definitely. Mm. Dude, I mean, you know, you've been here for a while now. Now you're working with our IOP department, right? Yeah. How has your life changed? How do you how do you feel on the inside now? Like being able to be here every day, being able to transform people's lives and I think the biggest thing dude, is I learned how to love myself, you know? That's great. Mm-hmm. You know, I can look in the mirror, I know who I am. And I'm passionate. I come to work, you know, and I'm happy every morning. That's good. And it's a feeling I had lost for a long time. You know, I get to my uh I get to look at my. I feel like my son gets to look at me now, and he has a something to he, something to look up to. He's proud of dad. You know what I mean? That's a priceless and, um, feeling, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And now you have a relationship with your son. Oh yeah, yeah. Praise he looks God. just like me too. He got got <laughs> cursed cool. with my big ears though. But he's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he's yeah, he's awesome. He's an awesome little dude. I wish I was like him, man. Wow. I ended up abandoning all my kids. But yeah. I wish I was a father like you. So was, you did the right thing so you could be that close. father. Yes, sir. I was so that proud close. of you. All I could go, I I knew how that felt, you know, not having a parent in your life, um, and I knew I, that I wasn't. I was willing to do whatever I could, mm-hmm. but like you said, I had a lot of a lot of things to figure. I had to face myself, forgive yeah. myself. Mm-hmm. And now you get to be that dad. And the scripture says yeah. to raise your child in the way that they should go. Definitely. That way, they won't even depart from it when they're older. Yep. So you get to be that dad. Yes, sir. Wow. That's fantastic, Marcus. Yeah, and now that you've now that you're to the point where you are now, is your relationship with your family rekindled? And they're yes, great. Yep, that's my awesome. mom. My dad's one of my best friends. That's my awesome. brother, my brother's a little completely opposite. He's a little genius. Dude lives in San Diego. He's yeah. a program like he's a programmer. Uh huh. Oh, Tesla that's cool. and stuff. So yeah, it's awesome. Oh dang. Him, bro. Yeah, so he's a little brainiac. That's yeah, cool. But, yeah, um, and my sister, she's eight years younger than me. She just had her twenty second birthday. That's doing awesome. great, and I get to talk to them whenever I can daily. That's so um, great, man. Yeah, so and it's an awesome feeling, um, and it's you know for a long time it it, it broke my heart for I just like um, like my sister like I said I didn't I feel like I didn't see her for years. I the next time I saw her she was an adult and that that hurt me. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I got to talk to them, and like I said, they've always done their um, they've always been there. They never left. Mm-hmm. It was me that that was pushing them away, and they just you know. They're just happy that I'm where I'm at now today, yeah. and they're very supportive, which is the best feeling. I know. So uh, that, that's an awesome thing, man. And I know you said shout out to Victor. Yeah. I want to give a, I want to give Victor a big yeah. shout out. I want to <laughs> give uh, you know all the maintenance. We're looking at them right now. They're putting up this beautiful gate all the way around the facility. So they're putting in always that hard work. Something. You're at the arc. They always. are always doing so. I pull in and I'm like, here's another project. Yeah. I know. I always get nervous. I'm like, because they have stuff out in the concrete when you're driving in. I'm like, can I drive over? this mm-hmm. or like do you yeah. to stop in reverse <laughs> and he's such a great dude man i mean even little things i told him i said i was cutting my tree at the house he's like hey you need yeah. to borrow some tools i trust that's, you i know you take yeah. care of them just bring them back i'm like thank you yeah that's yeah. where i go and need to change my own he's always gone back with something like that so he's always offering help he's been a big support to me so that's yeah, awesome my best friends yeah mm-hmm. that's so what awesome. made you decide to stay in this space that literally you went to go get the help in but now here you are like i tell you that was a, a big that is i'm almost unreal to me it's just a place that helped give me my life back yeah, yeah. i'm able to you know contribute and do that for other people yeah that's mm-hmm. uh for me, that's what gets me up in the morning. Yep, it's just, it's an awesome feeling, and that's the very promise that I made God when I got clean, young man, is to be just like you. And I worked at the same program that I end up getting treatment at myself. Yeah, mm-hmm. because and like you just now mentioned, it's about other people, not mm-hmm. self. Exactly, because mm-hmm. that actually gives you your joy and your happiness yeah. when you're making it about them and not me. Mm-hmm. I just want to thank, say thanks again for your transparency. Yeah, yes, sir. yeah, yes, yeah, man. Thank, thank you guys you. for having me. Thank you for coming, brother. I hope mm-hmm. I hope you had fun, dude. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Definitely. Shout yeah. out to Mike, man. He got us the nice chairs. He got us everything. You could lounge. I have more water bottles if you need cool. some. 
them whatever you mm-hmm. need, man, most definitely. Absolutely. Mike, the owner, is putting this all together because oh, yeah. he cares my, more about the clients, too. My mom called me. I called him earlier today. I haven't heard back from my mom. I finally got her to start listening to the podcast. Oh, yeah? Finally got her to. People have been telling her. She gave me a call this morning, and she goes, hey, I heard that guy, Mike. Who is that? I said, that's the mm-hmm. owner. And she goes, he's got a really interesting story. I liked his voice, and he spoke very clear. She was all excited. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was going to call Mike and give him a shout-out, let him know that he's appreciated on the podcast. So yeah. if you're listening, mm-hmm. Mike, shout-out, brother. I hope you're doing well. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you again. This has been another episode of the RCast. We appreciate you guys listening. If you or somebody you know would love to come on here and share their testimony with us, please, by all means, hit us up. Send us an email. Our email address is thercast6944 at gmail.com. Once again, T-H-E-A-R-C-A-S-T 6944 at gmail.com. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Much love and God bless you guys. God bless, guys. What's going on, everybody? This is Buddha from the RCast, and I just wanted to thank you for checking out this week's episode. It means a lot, and if you could share it with a friend or a loved one, somebody you need in recovery, or maybe somebody who just needs that little bit of extra positivity in their life, we'd greatly appreciate it. If you would like to join us here on the RCast, either in the studio live or online, hit us up. The links are down in the show notes of this episode, and on there, you can find direct links to our main website here at America's Rehab Campus and all of our social media platforms. Follow us. We keep the posts positive and motivational focused on recovery, health, and wellness. As you know, in this modern day and age, we need as much love as possible, y'all. And as always, if you or somebody you know is in need of substance abuse treatment, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We're open 24 hours a day, and our direct phone number is 1-833-272-7342. Once again, that phone number is 1-833-272-7342. I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day. Much love and God bless. Peace.